Viewer Friday, go! Yo, what is up, Cracks and Clan members? And others who stumped on this video, I guess. Pokemon fans, I guess you could call it that, I guess. Uh, anyways, we're here back with another Viewer Friday. Today's suggestion comes from Desert, who wants me to talk about my most memorable moments of the Pokemon game. So I took it as the whole franchise. And there are obviously a couple here and there. Uh, obviously, one of my biggest is Pokemon Ruby. I don't have the games with me. I do have footage showing right now. Uh, this is my first ever shiny Pokemon, uh, aside from the, you know, red Gyarados from Johto. But, so this thing is essentially, so I don't remember exactly what cave it was that I got it in, but I, uh, found it. I thought my game was glitched. I was freaking out, but I caught it anyways. It was a shiny Zubat, and, uh, like, well, obviously I didn't know it was a shiny Zubat, but it was a different color. It made some weird noises, a uh, screen flash, and I was freaking out. But I caught it, and, you know, I trained it, I leveled it up and everything. You know, obviously, the moveset it has uh, is not that great. The nature it has is not that great. Uh, it This was way back before I did competitive, so it doesn't even matter. But the point is, it was my first ever shiny, and I'm so excited to have it now in Oras. Like, I literally transferred it over, you know, the course of time, and now it's in Gen 6 games, which is amazing. I'm really, really happy about that. It's honestly one of... It's definitely one of the biggest things that has ever happened with me. Also, as you know, just probably noticed, it was level 100, which also comes to the point that Generation 3, the especially Pokemon Ruby, is the only is was the first time I ever got Pokemon to level 100. Like I had an actual full team up to level 100 because of how much time I dedicated to that game. Like, I literally like spammed hours. If I remember correctly, I was around 400 hours of gameplay. And that was, like I said, before I even did competitive. Like, I didn't play competitive until, like, in the games, the main series games, I didn't start till Gen 6. But in terms of, like, I did, like, Pokemon Online, like, PO and, and all that stuff during the Generation 5 uh, games. But I didn't play competitive in Gen 5 because I just did not, like, I didn't want to do the stupid EV training and all that stuff. But, uh, so this was way back then. So literally it was just me playing the game and, Another thing I remember from back then, that's something that I have not been able to accomplish in the remakes, and it's just because I just don't play them as much, but every single contest category, I got to the master class and I won with a lot of Pokemon. So, like, I remember I had Melodic for one, I had a Swellow in one, uh, my Blaze, I had a Blaziken who also won one, uh, like, my Flygon did the Toughness one, I remember that one, which is amazing. So, like, I, I, I did all of them, I did all of them, and it was amazing, it was it was awesome, and like you, it's like I don't, I don't know, like what drove me to do those, but like I've always loved contests, and like uh, it carried carried over. I didn't do it as much in the Diamond and Pearl games, so that's because I didn't really care too much about Gen Four. But like the fact that I was able to do that, and like it, it just felt like it's such an accomplishment, because like it was all, it was that, and bat beating the league with like so many different Pokemon, like. I, I beat the, the league with so many different teams. With It was crazy, but it was fun, you know. Uh, and it's just like, I, I just remembering that stuff. It's really, really cool um, to be able to, like, think about that stuff. Uh, so that's Gen t I, I'm talking too much about Gen 3, obviously. Uh, I remember in the Generation 2 games, I have my Pokemon Silver to be exact. Because I was the only one I had uh, at the time. Because my sister got gold and crystal. Because I, I just I let her have them. I mean, my parents bought me silver and her gold, and then she eventually got crystal. Because I guess she was a bigger fan of Suicune back in the day. I don't know what was wrong with me. I love Suicune nowadays. But the point is, uh, I remember I had my Pokemon Silver. I got a trade from uh, I don't remember who it was. So I had I caught my Lugia, right? I had my Lugia, and then like I I caught the Ho Oh in the game. But this other person gave me a ho, -Oh. so I had two ho -Ohs in my team, and then my Lugia and my Typhlosion, which is actually a female. It was actually I didn't realize this until I was older, right? When I went back to play the games, I had a female Typhlosion. That was the first time I ever noticed that I had a female starter, and it's honestly the first. I didn't even plan for that. I never tried to do that, so it was crazy to find out. Like I usually don't care about you know genders. Um, 
in terms of my starters. Uh, at least back in the day, now I feel a little bit more. Uh, if I get a starter that I feel like I would prefer in a specific gender, I like try to go for that gender. For example, my Charizards from now, like for, I don't even remember. I think for the past like since Generation Five, I could say roughly. I've been want like if I get a Charizard, if I get a Charmander, it has to be a female. Like I always try to get a female Charmander because like for me, I just preferred female Charizard. Typhlosion is a male. Uh, Sceptile is a male. Pilbuff could be either. I don't have a problem. Uh, Superior is male. And then when I got the Gen Six games, I literally like spent about an hour soft resetting my game to get a female Finnegan because Del Fox is a girl. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, <laughs> So, like, that's the type of thing, like, I, I didn't strive for a female Pokemon, like, female star back in the day, but it was just, it was crazy. It was ironic, like, when I went back to play it and I noticed that my top was was female with that. Because that's, like, a small chance, obviously. Like, if you don't actively go out and do it, like, most of the time you're not going to get a female, uh, unless it's just pure luck. And, like, like I said, I didn't even notice that when I was a child, because I guess it wasn't really important. Like, it's still not important, it's just... It's just the, the matter of things. And then, like, uh, I guess, you know, Gen 1 was Gen 1. I never actually did the mute glitch. I remember that for, like, I, people were spreading rumors. I didn't, was the what type of person that I didn't want to risk breaking my games. So I didn't try the glitches because I, I figured that if anything happened to my game, I was going to cry and then the game is dead and stuff like that. Uh, another thing, this, this is not in terms of, like, games, but just something that happened to me when I was a child. Or when I was, not a child, when I was younger. Uh... One of the main reasons why I try to keep my games, like, safe, like, me being the only one that either controls them or uses them, is because back when I was younger, obviously, I had cousins that were, you know, like, four or five years old. Like, they were really, really young. And, like, so, like, I would be playing, you know, whether it was Pokemon Yellow or Pokemon Crystal or, or not Crystal, Silver or, like, my Ruby or stuff. I never let them touch the Gen 3 games, because I, especially Pokemon Ruby, like, that was the game that nobody was ever going to touch, because that was my boy, but I re strictly remember, I had my Pokemon Yellow game, I was playing on my, uh, Game Boy Advance SP, which I do not have here, because I'm not at home, right, I'm at my mom's place, and I'm in the U.S., in Arizona, my house is in Puerto Rico, so that's a whole different country, the point is, I have a Pokemon Yellow in my, uh, in my SP, and, like, I, I was forced to to let my little cousin play, and he, he just erased everything, and because he didn't know what he was doing, and like so I had to like restart everything, and I was so pissed. So I really don't like letting people borrow my Pokemon games just for that fact alone, because it's like, ah, you're gonna ruin it, you're gonna mess it up, something's gonna happen, the game is dead, it's just dead. But <laughs> yeah, so it was really crazy, really fun. Uh, I guess, like, Gen 5, just the emotional connection I had with the game, like, I still think Gen 5 is the best generation, hands down. Like, it's not my favorite, because I still prefer Gen 3. Gen 3 will always be my favorite. Gen 7 is not looking that well, so there's no way in hell I was going to ever overtake Gen 3. But I still consider Gen 5 to be the best generation in terms of, like storytelling in terms of uh just the gameplay in terms of like extra shit you could do in the games and like i just feel like the gen 5 games were the best crafted games and i they just raised the stakes so high and game, game freak just hasn't been able to achieve what they did like gen 6 was trash i mean like i honestly like the best thing i can say about gen 6 is that it was the fun finally the first time i did competitive in the main series games because like before that it was all like on servers online you know and pokemon online po or as other people would call it so like i don't know it's just that's literally the best they had like the fact that i made it easy to be a competitive battler with the ev training and stuff like that but that was it that was it like i just i guess what i guess what i could say for a memorable moment of generation six is how after Looking past the visuals, I was able to, like, understand what a crappy game it was. Because, honestly, like, when the games were first announced, I was like, oh, my gosh, hype and excitement and crazy and, oh, my gosh. And, like, over time, I was getting more excited with new trailers, new leaks, every, all this shit. Mega Evolutions, I was like, whoa, that's weird, but it's kind of cool. And then 
very typing and like, oh wait, that looks weird. And then over time, I got so like it was a, it was a process. It was a process, but I was really excited for these games. And like I played them, obviously I was super look like having fun, even though I was questioning a lot of things. And then like uh, finishing the games, and then just realizing they were bad. Like they were actually, which is why I I when Sun and Moon were announced, I was like, nope, I'm not gonna do that whole hype train bullshit because. The same thing could happen with these games that has what happened with Gen 6. I wasn't going to risk it. I was not going to risk it. So I kept my, you know, I kept my spirits down low. The hype train is full stop and all that shit. And then I was right because Sun and Moon is trash at this point. And I, was, I don't know. It's crazy. Like, it's just crazy right now to realize and just think and reminiscing on all the past stuff that I've done with these games and realize that. I guess I'm just over it. Like I, I'm, I don't care about Pokemon at this point. Like Sun and Moon officially killed my dreams and hopes of playing Pokemon for the rest of my life. Well, actually, X and Y kind of did that, but like Oras came out and I was like, oh, remakes of my favorite generation. I guess you no, know? but like I don't know. I just Pokemon for me, for me right now, Pokemon is just over. Uh, I. I'm still reviewing the anime right now, but as soon as the English dub is over, I think I'm just done with the main stuff, like main series. I'm done with Pokemon the anime. I'm done with Pokemon the main games because I don't mind the the side games. If I get a po if they do a Pokemon Ranger game, you can bet your ass I'm gonna buy that shit. Pokemon Two, whenever that shit comes out, I'm buying that. Uh, what else? If they do another Mystery Dungeon game, that's somewhat decent, like. Not, not as, I don't expect them to reach the Explorers saga anymore. Like, I don't think they can make a Mystery Dungeon game as good as the Explorer series. But, if they can be at least somewhat the same as Super Mystery Dungeon, maybe a little bit better, then I'll obviously get into that. And then, like, I mean, I still like Rumble, but, like, the last one was kind of weird. I, I mean, I buy, I, I didn't buy it. I, I have it on my phone. Not my phone, my 3DS. So, it's there, and I do play it on occasions. I don't know, it's just weird, like, maybe, the side, I think the side games are the thing that will, I guess, keep me coming back to the franchise, but, like, the main series right now is dead to me, like, I'm, I have actually said, stated this on multiple times, I'm not buying Sun and Moon, uh, they, there's just nothing they can do at this point, they can have, I, I highly doubt they can do this, but if they can pull off a better story than Black and White, I'm still not buying these games just for the fact that some of the features on it are not worth getting these games, because I'm not two years old anymore, and the new Pokemon I got released are all trash, so, like, what the fuck is the point of even buying these games? Gen 5, the po a lot of the Pokemon were trash, but there was stuff in there that made it exciting to buy the games, so, and I would mean, I there's still Pokemon in there I don't like, but I've grown attached to a lot of them. But I still love the Gen 5 games for what they were. Like, the Pokemon that were not the thing that made the game. Now, in Sun and Moon, not only are the Pokemon trash, but the mechanics are trash, too. So, it's like, it's, I guess, at this point, I'm just, just thinking back, I'm glad I have those memories. Because then I can look back at that and be like, see, that's when Pokemon was a game. I still have the old school games. I can play them whenever I want. Well, I'm not at my home, so I don't have them with me at this point, right now. But... I can go back and play them whenever I want. I still have all my side games. I can go back and play them whenever I want. I have Pokemon, which I'm trying to get really, really into because I eventually want to join a tournament because just for the fuck of it, just for experience because I'm also doing it for Smash Brothers. I was going to plan, I was planning on going to Evo, but Evo was expensive and I was like, nope, I can't go to that because money is tight. So, but maybe like, maybe in a future, future tournament, I do want to participate uh, after I started getting money and like being able to practice consistently because yeah, um That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, Leave your most member moments in the comments down below. Let me know what you think and uh, as always keep suggesting your Fridays I am um, I have a list, but I can keep adding to that list and then uh, I guess upload the videos as they come out and stuff like that I remember they don't have to be Pokemon themed. I, I, I feel like I don't say that enough they don't have to be Pokemon themed. You can ask me to make a video about anything within reason. Like, like, don't expect me to like jump off a bridge with, a, you know, like, and don't don't ask for anything like too fancy because I don't have the best equipment. You know, I have my camera. Um, you know, that's my computer. 
and then my editing software. I don't have a bunch of fancy stuff. Like, my mic is literally the, the laptop mic. I can't. So, like, discussions is fine, but and anything crazy, you know, I can do. I remember I still did that skit. I probably could not do something that great again, but it's an option, right? Um, so, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I have been Sarah Croxon, and I'll see you guys in future videos.